In this video we're going to look at these example 4 and 5 and we'll have complex number solutions. So we've got to use the quadratic formula first of all. So I'll go to, we'll walk through example 4 and then I'm going to have you do example 5 by yourself and then check the video. Okay. <clears throat> so let's walk through example 4 together. So please write it down and hopefully you have a sheet with the quadratic formula written out somewhere that you can reference, right? <coughs> so we have x squared plus 2 equals x. What are the values of a, b, and c for the quadratic formula? Can we find a, and b, a, b, and c yet? Can we say what a, b, and c are yet? A is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, see that, bx, so it's ax squared plus bx, and c is the number by itself. And we have to have 0 on the right. We do not have that situation here, right? So what are we going to do? What's the first step we need to take here? Think about what is the first step we need. How about subtract x from both sides, right? Now. Do you see how this equation has the x squared term, then the x term, then the number? Can you do that here? x squared minus x plus 2 equals, what's x minus x? 1x minus 1x, no x's, 0, right? What's the value of a, b, and c? the coefficient of x squared, the coefficient of x, and the number. That is 1x squared, so a is 1. And what about x? What's the coefficient of x? That is negative 1x, isn't it? So b is negative 1, and c is what? c is, c is 2, right? So a is 1, b is negative 1, c is 2. If I'm going to use the formula now, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 to c all over 2a, it's going to be x equals negative parenthesis plus or minus square root of parenthesis squared minus 4 times parenthesis times parenthesis all over 2 times parenthesis. That's what you write out first and then just plug in the numbers where they go. So please write that out, plug in these numbers, press pause if you need more time. So b is negative 1, a is 1, and c is 2. So I have x equals negative negative 1 is positive 1, plus or minus, and then this root becomes the square root of, now, negative 1 squared, negative 1 times negative 1, minus 4, 4 times 1 is just 4, or neg negative 4, then times 2, okay? So I like to calculate the square root by itself. So this is negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, negative 4 times uh, 2 is negative 8. What's 1 minus 8? One dollar, subtract eight dollars. How far are you in debt? 1 minus 8? You're in debt by 7. So we have root negative 7. Can we simplify that root? Oh, I guess on the fraction I usually do this. That's all over and the bottom is 2 times 1, 2. And I'm just going to, this answer I'm going to plug in here in a minute, right? Now root negative 7, can I simplify that? That is no real number. So there are no real number solutions to this because this is a root of a negative. But we can write that in the form of a complex number or an imaginary number. So this is negative 1 times 7. Negative 1 times 7 gives negative 7, right? So I can write this as root negative 1 times root 7, which is what? What's root negative 1? How can you write that? Root negative 1 is i, right? So it's i root 7. So we have 1 plus or minus i root 7 all over 2. Okay. Now, 
Question. Are we done? Uh, can we cross cancel anything? Nope. Um, we can't factor the top anyway, so we couldn't possibly cross cancel anything. So the answer is we have x equals 1 plus i root 7 over 2 or x equals 1 minus i root 7 over 2. Two solutions like that. Okay. So please press pause. Please press pause. Do this yourself. Go out, get as far, get stuck in, get as far as you can, and uh, make mistakes if you need to. This is a good time to make mistakes because then you can check the video and and learn. Okay. So you only learn by making mistakes. We all make mistakes when we learn this stuff. I've made about a million mistakes on these problems. So oh, you probably will too. So press pause, do it yourself, and then I'll go through it uh, quite quickly. Okay. So I'm going to do it now. I hope you've tried it. The first step is to get 0 on the right, so I need to subtract 6x from both sides. That gives me x squared. Now, I like to write it in this order. x squared, then the x, then the number. So x squared minus 6x plus 13 equals 6x minus 6x is 0. If you haven't got that, please press pause and continue from this point. Okay, so now I can write down the value of a, b, and c a is the coefficient of x squared. We have 1x squared, so a is 1. b is the coefficient of x, b is negative 6, c is the number, c is 13. So now I use the formula, okay, so the formula is this. So it's going to be negative parenthesis plus or minus the square root of parenthesis squared minus 4 times parenthesis parenthesis all over 2 times parenthesis and then I plug in the numbers. Now b is negative 6, a is 1, and c is 13. Then I calculate this. If you've made a mistake to this point, please press pause and you know start, you know, kind of start again and just continue from here. Okay. So we should have negative negative 6 is positive 6. 2 times 1 is 2 and we've got to calculate that root. Now this root, it's root of negative 6 squared. That is root of negative 6 times negative 6 and then we have minus 4 times 1 times 13. Now negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, then I times it by 13. So that gives me negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. Negative 4 times 13 is 12 carry the 152, so negative 52. Uh, 52 minus 36 is uh, 42 minus, er, sorry, 12, that's 4. Uh, 12 minus 6 is 6, so it's 16. So, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so negative 16. I have root of negative 16. Now that can be simplified. So if you've made a mistake up to here, please press pause and try and get it out from here. Continue from here. Okay. Okay, so negative 16 is negative 1 times 16. And I can get the root of this and the root of this. Now root negative 1 comes out nicely. That's just i, of course. What is root 16? Root 16 is just 4. So I have i times 4, or 4i. Four so this entire root calculation became an imaginary number, it became 4i. Okay, now this is the point where we could possibly, do you think, simplify that fraction. Now if you're going to simplify a fraction you must factor the top and bottom. Can you factorize the top? Pull out a common factor from 6, you know, imagine this is just a plus, plus 4i. What goes into 6 and 4? How about 2? Does 2 go into 6 and 4? Yep. 2 times what gives 6? 2 times 3. 2 times what gives 4i? 2 times what gives 4i? 2 times 2i. Similarly, if you had a minus there, it would be the same thing. So plus or minus. Okay. It's all over 2. 
Now you can cross cancel common factors. See that? The twos cross cancel. The reason you can cross cancel is because this two is being multiplied, multiplied by this. Okay. So now we have x equals one times uh, three plus or minus two i, and it's all over one. So that means it's just three plus or minus two i. And of course, you can write that as two different complex numbers: x equals three plus two i, or x equals three. Whoops. Right, minus 2i. Okay?